This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at compression basics in Adobe Media Encoder. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to compress and publish a movie for social media. So let's say that what I want to do is I want to compress this file for Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. Well, the good news is there are presets that allow me to do all of those without having to do any work whatsoever. First, I drag in my movie. Then I go over to the preset browser, twirl down web video, twirl down social media, and we can see that there's presets for Facebook and Twitter and Vimeo and YouTube. Remember the third compression rule. The third compression rule is that we add our compression settings based upon what we want the file to become. So I don't care if this drama is a 1080 image or a 720 image or a 4K image. I don't care what the source is. I care what I want it to become. For instance, I want to compress this to be a 720 image to Facebook. Grab the Facebook setting and drag it on top of the name of the clip. And now I've got a Facebook setting and I've got this default setting. I want to do Twitter 720p. Grab that and drag it on top of the name. I want to do YouTube. I could do 1080. I'm just using 720. But here I want to replace the match source. So if I drag it on top of the file, it will add it. If I drag it on top of the compression setting, it will replace it. Except I really don't want Facebook. So I'm just going to click on it once to highlight it, hit the delete key. It says, you sure you want to do that? I'm going to say yes. And maybe I really don't want Twitter. I'll click in the gray area here to get rid of it and hit the delete key and say I don't want Twitter. There's no limit to the number of compression settings that I apply to a piece of video. And because parallel encoding is turned on, if I had Facebook and Twitter and YouTube all selected at the same time, I would compress all three of those at the same time, which decreases the amount of time it takes to get my files compressed. Can I apply multiple presets? Yes. Can I move them around? Yes. Can I delete them? Yes. Can I replace them? Yes. There's one more really, really cool thing. I want to have this file automatically loaded up to YouTube. And to do that, I'm going to just simply click once on the preset, and that opens up the export settings window. And there's a feature inside Media Encoder that you need to pay attention to, and that's over here in the Publish tab. We'll talk about the other settings in just a minute. When I publish something, I can send it to the Creative Cloud or Adobe Stock or Behance or Facebook. Let's pick... Um, Let's pick Twitter, just because it's easy. When I turn Twitter on by checking it, I can add my login credentials, I can add the status, and I can delete the local file after upload. When this is checked, Media Encoder will compress my file, store that file locally to a hard disk, the compressed files folder, transfer the compressed file up to Twitter, then delete the file that's stored inside the compressed files folder. Or, as another example, probably a bit more popular, if we go to YouTube, turn YouTube on, here I can add my YouTube credentials, select the channel that I want to send this to. I personally have two channels at YouTube. I can specify the playlist, title, description, privacy. I can, depending upon what my YouTube status is, if my membership level supports it, I can add a custom thumbnail, either by picking it from the source video or exporting a still frame from the source video and pulling that still frame in and use that as my custom thumbnail for YouTube. And again, I can delete the local file after the upload is complete. Now, there's two schools of thought here. One is, this makes the process of creating and uploading files to Facebook or Twitter or YouTube really, really easy. Personally, I don't use them. And here's why. If speed is more important than quality, then use these. Because what will happen is, your file will be compressed and immediately uploaded to YouTube you're dealing with news or sports or one of the entertainment channels where you're trying to get news and gossip up as fast as possible. This will make that happen. But if quality is more important than speed, and for me it is, 
What I do instead is I compress the file, I look at the compressed file, and verify that everything is good, the compression is okay, no artifacts, and everything is spelled right. Then, as a separate step, I upload it to YouTube or I upload it to my website. For me, it is more important to prevent problems by doing one last pass through my video and make sure that everything is okay than saving five or ten minutes and have it upload automatically. There's nothing wrong with this feature. It works great, does what it's supposed to do. It's a question of your own personal workflow. For me, I prefer to look at the file. Now, this was brought home three weeks ago when I was getting ready to upload a webinar that was current at that time, and I looked at it one last time after all editing was complete and compression was done, and I realized I'd misspelled three different titles. Couldn't believe it. So <sighs> had to go back, open the file back up, correct the spelling in the titles, re-output, recompress, and then upload. It cost me multiple hours. But the only person that knew that was a mistake up until right now was me. I didn't embarrass myself in public. For me, having high-quality footage that looks good is more important than having it automatically published. But not everybody is driven by that criteria. If you want to save time, the publish category can save you a ton of time. All you have to do is check it to enable it. I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't automatically upload. And when I'm done, I've, I've already shown you how to set and create a small file and how to work with the publish category. Click OK, and we've now modified those settings. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at compression basics inside Adobe Media Encoder. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 249. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, all on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it several times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.